I can see a screen with Kate Fox on it for yeah. John Doe. <laughs> Standard name. All right. So I'll uh, go over some of the basics. Um, so of course the logo that you're seeing here, you can upload your own logo. And uh, the dashboard uh, provides the basics, uh, uh, for example, your upcoming task, upcoming calendar items. And this is just a broad reporting how much uh, you, your firm in total built um, during different okay. months. You can, all, all, uh, you can also see per user how much each of the user did every month and uh, and this is a view of uh, your unpaid invoices meaning uh, invoice were generated but uh, they, they have a, a, a credit balance uh, client hasn't paid them either fully or partially and of course you can also up, um, download all of them in PDF format or Word format or just a list. So let me ask you this because I'm thinking, you know, we sat through another meeting and I was thinking more about yours and one of the things that I, I had spoken to you or emailed you about is the challenge, one of the challenges that we have is that a lot of our clients require customized invoices and that they need certain fields to be displayed and certain fields not to be displayed. And so from your comments back, it almost sounds like we won't be able to generate invoices within quick case box. So I'm thinking one of what we should probably try to do is it, use case box as our recordation software. So we record all of our billing entries into case box and then we export all of that data to QuickBooks and generate the invoices within QuickBooks. Is that a possibility? Actually, it's even uh, better. You generate the invoices here uh, because QuickBooks does not have uh, time entries export. So what we do is we generate invoices here uh, in case Fox and then uh, we go and export them into QuickBooks. So copy invoices to QuickBooks Online. Uh, when you do that, uh, the invoice including... We use QuickBooks Desktop. Is that going to be a problem? Uh, it will be a two-step process uh, dex for desktop uh, because there is no API for desktop. So what we do is uh, QuickBooks So every month uh, you will have to export invoices. Let's say this lot this month you generated some invoices and then you uh, click on this button export invoices to IAF format this will give you a file okay. and that file can then be imported into QuickBooks desktop and then uh, uh, that file actually include uh, the invoices including time entries and expense entries generated in the selected month. So this is what uh, you can give it a test try, uh, you know, generate a couple of invoices, export them uh, through this button and then import them um, into QuickBooks desktop and uh, let's see if you uh, are able to modify it. I mean you can customize the invoices, the only thing, I mean you can hide some fields, you can uh, enable, disable those fields through these settings but these settings are global, uh, meaning all your invoices for all your client will be uh, affected by these settings. Although yeah, these you set don't have the option right. to customize not, that invoice by client. Yeah, it's not yeah. by client because that becomes more complicated and uh, lots of people don't need it, but the interface becomes very intimidating for them to use because there are so many elements mm -hmm. of the, UI. But one thing is that these settings are non-destructive. So let's say if uh, uh, turn it, uh, you can turn them on and off at any time and then simply download the invoice again. You don't need to delete the invoice and regenerate. So invoices are uh, modified interactively even after generating an invoice. Let's say you found out that uh, you missed some description, met with the client and if this entry has already been built uh, the invoice will be updated automatically so all you have to do is just click on a PDF and download that invoice again so uh, sure. that makes it a little bit easier because then you don't have to delete and um, recreate the invoices again. Okay. 
And in future, if you have a plan to move to QuickBook Online or Zero, that process is very uh, easy to, um, you know, copy invoices to uh, because all you have to do is just click this button and uh, the, both of these uh, products, their online versions have an API that our server calls uh, seamlessly in the background and uh, transfer the data uh, within seconds and then um, you, oh. can, you can manipulate the invoices uh, over there. <clears throat> but desktop also works. So let's see. Uh, in, uh, is there anything particular you want me to go over or uh, um, I can give a general overview? I mean, one thing we have is... Uh, um, go ahead and give a general interview, overview. I think the things we're most interested in is the creation of an invoice, the leads, um, how, the, how the leads system okay. works, making sure that all of our codes are in there, that they can be customized, right. whatever we need to do. Um, okay. Those are the biggest things, and then the QuickBooks interface. All right. Okay. So invoicing, um, we have two ways of generating invoices. One is uh, uh, kind of a manual. So after entering time and expense entries, you click on invoices tab, click on generate invoice, and then here you can pick and choose if you want to uh, select all previously unbuilt. So system keeps track what has been already built and what has not been built. So you will never be, the system will never let you build one entry twice. Uh, so let's say if uh -huh. I select this and create, uh, it's as easy as that. I can then just download this invoice. I can delete them liberally. Uh, nothing changes. Underlying data is not deleted when you delete an invoice uh, and you can recreate. You can change dates, uh, invoice date or even invoice numbers you can change here. Uh, there is another way of generating invoice. Uh, if you have a good, amount, good volume, say you are generating 15 invoices, 16 invoices in a month, uh, going from case to case and generating um, you know, those invoices manually takes time. So we have this automated way. So I went to settings, tools, reports, and then I clicked on uh, bulk generate invoices. Here, if I don't select anything and just click on generate invoices, what system will do, it will go from client to client internally, try to find if there is uh, unbuilt time and expenses there, and generate all invoice in one click. And the, the, or you can also select, you say, okay, I just want to generate invoices for this particular client and this particular case, and system will do that. Uh -huh. and, and after that, all you have to do is go to click uh, uh, dashboard and say download all invoices um, for a selected month. <clears throat> and uh, it will give you a PDF file. Uh, you can download either in Word, Leads, uh, you know, there are multiple formats. You click on download zip. So all your 15 voices will be zipped into a zip file and will be downloaded. So that provides a quick way of doing it. And let's go over leads. So you don't have to do anything special for leads other than uh, when you're doing time entry, you will have to select the codes. So that's one thing, and uh, another thing is that there are two other settings. So under clients, uh, you have to pick, uh, uh, enter your law firm ID, uh, which is normally your tax ID. Uh, that identifies your firm uh -huh. in the uh, billing system of your client. And then every sure. time you add a new case that requires leads type invoice, you also have to enter uh, client matter ID, which uh, um, normally, uh, if you're using time matrix or a system like that, it will have a space there where you can enter that client, uh -huh. matter, uh, client matter ID or sometimes it generates automatically. So whatever you enter here should match whatever is in time matrix or the other billing system, uh, leads billing system. That's all you have to right. do for uh, setting up uh, uh, for leads. And uh, these codes... Can you go back to where you select leads? Yes, click Manage Codes. I'd like to see the, yes. the Manage so, Codes. 
Right. So this is, uh, we have made it very flexible. So these are pre-populated with the uh, latest uh, UTBS BMS codes. But you can also create your own codes. And you can also, because the list could be longer, so what we have done is uh, you see this checkbox. Uh, this will either hide this category, the entire group, or display it. Uh, and where it matters is when you go to add notes, that list is then displayed yeah, here. So you, you don't want it to be too long because it will be uh, difficult to manage. So you can pick and choose what category uh, you want and you can also create your own groups. So if you have custom codes, okay. you can create your own group, but we have entered uh, whatever the standard codes here uh, for yeah. different type of uh, uh, practice areas. We have litigation code, we have patent codes, uh, project code, trademark code. So we have pretty much everything. Time matrix has some special code, so we have also added those. But again, uh, you can uh, add your own custom code very easily. Or you can extend so the some list. Some of our clients, yes. some of our clients have what's called subcodes. So like there's an expense code and then a subcode. Um, and then same with uh, a task. There's a task code and the subcode. Or an activity code. Yes. And the task code. That's that's a uh, uh, standard. That's that's how it works. So uh, we have different type. So when you create your own um, group, you can select whether it's a task group or activity or expense. As you see here, it's an activity code. So I'll go back to <coughs> add notes. So you see there are two uh, boxes here. So in first box, you click, click uh, uh, you select task code, and then the second one uh, will show you activity code. So they always go in groups, except uh, in expenses. In expenses, sometimes there are no task code. You just select expense code. But in most cases, if you're selecting a task code, you will uh, require to select an activity, what activity within that task code uh, uh, was uh, uh, this note is associated with. There is another thing what we have is uh, some client will uh, actually um, have some type of rules, uh, meaning if you select a particular task code, then it only goes with a particular type of activity code. So you can also um, configure those rules, which is not, which is an optional uh, um, uh, activity, but I you see. can also do that. You can also, uh, let's say if you have loss of a staff member, you can click this uh, saying for this particular client, everybody will have to enter task code. So this way, when you're okay. making the time entry, they don't miss them out. Otherwise, then at the time of invoicing, someone have to go and enter those task codes. So you can enforce these rules. So all the members in the in the firm, uh, when they are doing the time entry, uh, the system will not let you let them save it unless they select the right task code. Or you can also say, can you make yes in the same box? Can you make task codes and activ activity codes for a specific client? So if you select this client, Ahmed and Associates, and you create a task code and activity code, are those only correlated with this client? Uh, no, these are the rules. Uh, so task code and activity code you configure in the previous screen we were, we were there. Okay. But these rules yeah. uh, say that, let's say, if someone entered um, L200, then you will say this only goes with activity 101. So if someone is choosing L200 for this client, the system will force them to use activity 101 only, not 102 or I anything see. else. So that okay. ensures that all time entries are correct at the time of invoicing. Uh, the invoicing then becomes very easy. And the, the invoices are okay. rejected by the client. So that makes a lot of sense. This is, this is all uh, you code. need for leads. Uh, other than that, when invoices are created, they are created in all formats. Uh, you can download them individually by clicking on this uh, little icon. Or the best way is uh, after doing the invoicing every month, you go back to download, say, leads here. 
select the month uh, of invoicing and uh, just download. The system will give you a zip file. We actually have another feature. Sometime client, let's say uh, some insurance company, uh, you are working on 10 cases. They will, they may ask you uh, for just one file for all the uh, uh, that includes invoices for all cases. That also you can do it from here instead of uh, uh, having 10 files. You can have just one file. So it's just a yeah. one step upload to their system. Perfect. So let's see what else. Uh, and the time, uh, one other thing is uh, you can set up uh, staff access and rate. So we have this concept of role management. And I'll uh, first go to the staff. Uh, you see here these, uh, uh, there are different type of roles. So normal staff uh, will only see limited screens. What you are seeing right now is an admin screen. Uh, limited, is, uh, sorry, uh, normal staff when he or she logs in, he will only see cases, a dashboard, no, no financial information will be shown, and only the uh -huh. cases that you grant access to. So let's say there are 200 cases in the system, but uh, by default, the normal staff will not see any case except uh, the, the staff has been granted access to certain cases. And I'll show you how to. Uh, you can grant access to all cases by clicking on this button or revoke access from all cases. And then the staff will start, cease to see any cases uh, when he clicks on uh, cases uh, projects. Um, this, there are some contract, uh, pre-configured pre contract staff roles. Uh, this role is interesting. This role will allow contract staff to only enter the time without seeing the amounts. So you probably sometimes you don't want the, the contract staff to know how much you are billing for them. And uh, if you select this, they will only see how much time they are entering, but they will never see the amounts. And then there is a office secretary role that can be customized so you can pick and choose what you want this role to have access to or what operations can be performed by this staff by sele selecting or unselecting these checkboxes. And okay. now if I go back, <clears throat> uh, one more thing here. So there are certain non-admin staff. Uh, uh, you want them to have access to every new case. Uh, because you don't want to go to this screen every time a new case is created and check this box. You can also give a default access. If you check this uh, checkbox here, uh, every time a new case is added, this particular person will have access to it. So it's just a shortcut. Sure. But you can always revoke it. So let's say I added this case, and now I want to uh, only Daniel to work on it. Um, then I'll just uncheck everything else and keep Daniel in. And I'll say this for this case, Daniel will be billing 250 NR. So this rate will be applicable for Daniel only for this case. So every case can have different rates. Or you can also set the rate at the client level. So let's say uh, a client has 50 cases and they're, they're paying the same amount for every case. Then instead of uh, setting it at uh, case level, I will also, I can also set it at client level. So I clicked on clients, I selected the client, and then I'll say hourly rate. And here I will enter hourly rate of, for all my um, staff members. And these rates uh, will then be um, uh, copied every time a new case is created for this particular client. So there are all kind of flexibilities okay. built into the system. Um, let's see what else. You can also have tasks. You can have uh, personal notes related to this client. Client uh -huh. uh, called to discuss something. And <clears throat> just, just for, you know, the, the purpose is that when new people come, they just review uh, what has happened in the case or in a client and they get up to speed. Or, you know, if it's a long running case, people tend to forget things. So this is a good way of keeping, uh, uh, you know, personal notes about uh, uh, 
uh, what happened in the case. You can also create case uh, associated tasks related to these case assigned to different staff members um, saying, um, you know, notify, uh, so assigned by, assigned to, and the staff member will get a notification that there is some task planning and you can monitor the tasks. There is another thing, calendaring. <clears throat> you can also create case calendar, uh, you know, let's say, hmm, divisional filing. Yeah, I can't imagine that we're doing this. This is really, all that we're going to do with this is just time okay. tracking. And really, most of our stuff is hourly. Can you go and show me where, or excuse me, flat, can you go and show me where uh, an attorney would go to enter, so they would add a time expense with yes. the add note button? <clears throat> so um, there are two ways. Uh, they can do quick entry, but this will be hourly rate, uh, not flat. Okay. If to enter flat rate, what uh, you need to do uh, is uh, not enter the time, just say just enter the cost. Just enter the cost. Three hundred dollar, um, you know, client meeting, and this will show up as uh, oh, because you know I selected those codes for this client, so it will force me yeah. to uh, enter something. Okay, so. So this this will shown as flat even on invoice when you generate the invoice it will be shown as flat. Uh, there is one thing though in leads there is no concept of flat fee is always hourly. Right. So system will then uh, you can still generate leads invoices out of these. What we will do internally we will convert them somehow make them uh, an hourly. So we'll say three hundred dollar an hour one hour. 300, something like okay. that. Uh, if the client uh, billing system is okay with that, uh, they will accept it. But uh, this okay. is how you enter, and uh, you can also enter expenses. Uh, uh, let's say 225 filing fee. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's just a pain. Okay. So this will be shown as an expense on the invoice also. It will be shown separately as an expense. Um, mm -hmm. So th you can do both in the same screen. Is it possible for, let's say, an admin to create a, uh, a, a fee or an expense and then for an attorney to approve of that? Uh, so normally what people do, uh, before running the invoice, uh, I'll click on uh, this button here and this will export uh, all the unbilled entries and attorney will review everything is fine uh, then uh, or make changes to it and then uh, it will be updated by the secretary or whoever is working in the system and then generate the invoice. Another way is um, all invoices can be generated in draft mode um, and I will show you. So if I click on this generate new invoices in draft mode all invoices will have a caption draft invoice so that uh, uh, just for the uh, visual notification that this invoice has not been approved yet by the attorney. So once that is approved, uh, uh, an invoice is approved, uh, then uh, whoever is working on it, uh, this box will not be checked if it's in draft mode. And let's say if this invoice has been approved by the attorney, managing attorney, I'll just go and click on it and then download the invoice again. So what this checkbox will do, it will remove that uh, caps and draft invoice and then uh, it becomes final. So it's a little okay. bit easier instead of having pre-invoicing which makes the system very complicated, we in incorporated that yeah. feature into the same one. Okay. Yeah. And there are Perfect. many uh, reporting options so uh, you can Let's say you can even get a month by month report how much was done in a, in a, in a, every month in this particular case. Actually, you can also break it down by people and every day how much they work on a particular case. 
let's say where is the quick report uh, per day totals total by month so we have a bunch of uh, lots of uh, reporting options you can also see a calendar entry of uh, how much work was done every day uh, it will have all your entries you can actually go right here click here and it will show you the details um, you can also edit those entries without leaving this screen it will uh, I mean with a, not without leaving without going to the case it will display uh, that particular entry I am editing it yeah, misspelled so it can be edited right from the calendar view um, so this and let's see other reporting options are here uh, run report this will give you whatever data you want uh, to pull from the system uh, using these checkboxes uh, for particular client or all client within date range uh, let's say if you want to see all time entries between these two date I'll just uh, download click on this button it will give me an Excel file with all time entries from different people categorized by uh, client and cases and the cases can also have their categories uh, uh, you can create more categories here uh, and you can assign those cases then it uh, you can also run category based report so for example I'll say uh, let's see how much money I made from personal injury type cases I'll just I made zero um, so this helps uh, you know getting more uh, filtered information about uh, your case, what case type you have uh, most likely you probably have uh, one or two case types but uh, uh, you can also categorize the cases you can also have flat fee cases uh, meaning uh, let's say if I agree to charge only three thousand um, dollar for this the entire case the system can also keep track of it and ensure that you don't bill more than three thousand and uh, it will also show you how much budget is remaining out of three thousand um, and all these things uh, are non-destructive meaning you can always go back and change it to zero and then it will it will become the case will become uh, unlimited uh, fee case um, let's see uh, I'm not sure if you're going to use trust accounting feature, but uh, the system can also. No. Okay. <clears throat> and. Uh, I, I think you got most of our questions. Do you have any questions? I think we're um, good. I guess we'll. I signed up for a free account, so that will give me a little while, I guess, to try it out and see how it works. Most mostly importing to QuickBooks and making sure that we're able to customize what we need on the invoices and, and playing around with it and, and right. just getting used to it. Yes. I, I would uh, uh, suggest that you create uh, one case and uh, create uh, a couple of invoices and then uh, export them in IAF and try it out in QuickBooks, how it looks. That's perfect. All right, sir. And uh, uh, if you have further questions, we can always answer those anytime. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. All right. You have a nice weekend, uh, all of you, and uh, have a nice day today. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.